Hey everyone and welcome back to part 5 of my football manager experiment where I swapped all the English divisions around and removed every single player and manager from those teams at the start. Obviously they've signed players since then but it's been pretty interesting so far. Lots of you enjoying it just like the last series but perhaps not as much interested in, in this one as the last one as it's pretty similar I guess. Um, which means I'm thinking part 6 will maybe be the last episode but I will go 10 years into the future so this part five just two years part six ten years and we're doing an overview of the lo of those ten years if you really want a part seven then like this video if it gets to 200 likes if this part five gets to 200 likes then I'll do a part seven where I do another ten years so you've got a potential 20 years there if, if you want if not part six will be the last part and I'll, I'll go ten years and we'll see what's happening in around about the year 2032. So I'm going to do 2021 and 2022 in this episode. So we we'll start with the Vanarama Conference South as not, as usual, which was won by Bournemouth, 109 points. Brentford second going up in the playoffs. Woking, Tombridge and Hendon going down. Lots of differences in the teams. Fulham missing out once again, as usual. They've just been so close every single time. The, they have the top average rating. Billy Jones is at Fulham at the age of 34. Top scorer was Nicholson for Brentford, who is a regen, a 19-year-old. These are some of the manager movements. We see Nigel Clough lost his job as Cardiff manager. Let's go up to the, the conference north. Try and get through a bit quicker today. Huddersfield, 104 points. Champions, Leeds missing out, as did Derby. Birmingham going up in the playoffs. Nuneaton, Fleetwood and Corby going down. We've still got Burnley and Hull City, two real-life Premier League teams stuck there in the bottom division. Top scorer was Hull City's Ryan Taylor, who is a real player, 33 years old. Top average racing was Craig Routledge for Derby. And most assists was Craig Noon for Huddersfield. He's moved there at the age of 33. Manager movements. We've seen um, Andy Robinson lose his job as Barnsley. Colin Lee loses his job at Leeds. Let's go up to the Conference Premier, which is currently um, 106th in the world competition reputation behind the Hungarian 3rd Division. But let's look at the team. Stoke City champions with 101 points. Liverpool going up in the playoffs as well. They've only just gone up. They've they've been pretty poor, and they've eventually managed to go up. I was, I'm not a Liverpool fan, and I, but I don't hate them. But I was sort of hoping that uh, Liverpool would get stuck there just to just to show how this experiment is slightly different with teams struggling a bit more. I was hoping that a big Premier League team would sort of become a a normal Conference team, uh, but Liverpool have managed to go up. So perhaps Newcastle could be that team. They're stuck here. Um, we've got Leicester, any other real-life Premier League teams, Villa, Palace. So there's potential for those teams to maybe get stuck. MK Don, Swindon and Kid Kidderminster and Dover were relegated, by the way. Top scorer was Kach Kachunga. There's three players, actually, for, for Newcastle. Also Shane Long for Liverpool and Jake Jenkins for, for Ipswich. All got 21 goals. Neil Taylor, top average rating for Liverpool. Jamie Patterson, top uh, most assists. So... Neil Taylor, 32 years old at Liverpool. Let's look at the Liverpool team then. They've got Tony Mowbray in charge. Tom Huddleston is their captain. Darren Fletcher is their vice captain. And John Ruddy is their key player. One and a half star reputation. OK finances. They've really suffered. They've really suffered big time. And this is the team for those interested. You can have a look at some of those names. A lot of them will, of course, be regens at this point. Now we're in the year 2021. But they are back up into the, the league. So we'll have to see if they fly up now. You'd assume they would, because every team so far has flown up the division since going out of the conference. As have West Ham and Swansea this season. West Ham comfortable champions, only losing three games all season. 106 goal difference, that is ridiculous. Swansea second place, getting more specifically promoted, along with Newport. Gateshead going up in the playoffs, Bury and Southport going down. As a lot of these teams started in the top two divisions, have obviously got relegated, but are becoming sort of League 2, League 1 quality teams now. Some have dropped down to the conference all the way down. Lewis Graben was top scorer for Swansea, 31 goals. Callum Wilson next to West Ham. He was also top average racing. James Morrison, uh, ex-West Brom player, um, 29 assists. 
let's look at the West Ham team just out of interest to see. Gary Monk is in charge still, Michael Hector is their captain and their key players, Kana Erkin. Let's just look at the squad, they've got three star reputation that's a lot higher than Liverpool who are only one division below them. The reputations really do get muddled up though. This is the team, a few names I don't really recognise there, probably regens. But they're in League One next season and you'd assume that they would keep going up now, along with Swansea. But we'll see, I'm sort of hoping some teams will get stuck in divisions and become League One, League Two conference teams, just to show that this database allows for certain teams to really struggle and other teams, some, some of the smaller teams that start in the top division to actually cement themselves as a, a top division regular. Let's look at League One then. Man United, as you'd expect, going up with 124 points, not losing a single game all season. They, they took a while to get out of that conference, but since then they've gone up twice in a row, along with Everton, who did struggle actually to, to really run away with it. 101 points, uh, six points ahead of Wickham. Basingstoke going up in the playoffs, beat to the likes of Portswood, but Portswood, Portsmouth, Plymouth and Wickham. Um, so well done to Basingstoke beating that, those teams. Bit of a Hampshire rivalry there with Portsmouth. Worcester, Tranmere, Heaven and Waterloo and Bradford, PA going down. Troy Deeney, top scorer along with Liam Forecast for Bath. It's good to see these other teams with top scorers in there, isn't it? Rob Vincent as well, Bath, most assists. So they finished mid-table, they did quite well really, but not amazingly well. Who's in charge of Man United? I'm guessing it's still the same guy as last time. John, yeah, John Coleman's still in charge. One Mata is their key player and their, assist, their vice captain. Someone's saying hi to me on Steam. Hello. Let's go up to the championship then, which was won by Manchester City, 120 points, and uh, Oxford second. Oh, where's the Southampton? Haven't gone up at the championship, so that's. That's a bit of a surprise because we've seen obviously those two teams go up together every single season. They've missed out by one point, Oxford going up. That is good to see, although I like Southampton, um, but they've they've not gone up. Chelmsford City have been promoted in the playoffs as well. That's fantastic for, for me. Two teams I have an affinity with there, Chelmsford and Southampton. But Chelmsford, that was that's good because you'd expect Leamington and Southampton to obviously dominate with those 92 points, you'd expect them two to be in the final, but as the playoffs often go, it's often the fifth or sixth team that does go up. Um, but yeah, that's an interesting finish there for Southampton, struggling to get out. Usually 92 points would be enough to get promoted automatically, but it wasn't quite enough. Gosport, Sutton United and Stalybridge went down. We've still got Hyde in there in the Championship, Ebbsfleet, Wildstone, some teams that did quite well in the last experiment Whitehawk and AFC Fylde Hazen heading all the way down there so they're struggling a bit but they they are surviving in the championship at least top scorer was this guy for Man City let's have a look at him Zaza lots and lots of goals for him amazing season Patrick Roberts most assists for Oxford City who didn't go up Oxford with a the, the other Oxford with the team that went up that's a bit of a rivalry isn't it he moved for 1.3 million I think so yeah, some interesting stuff going on there. Let's have a look at the transfers to see what's been happening in this division. Thomas Callas, top for Man City. Jose Baxter going to Oxford as well, 8.75 million. Porto signing a player of Chelmsford. They sold a couple of players for a lot of money actually, which maybe helped them get into the playoffs. They spent a bit of money. Grimsby spending quite a bit of money there, as you can see. Let's go up to the Premier League then which was won by Chelsea, well done to Chelsea this season, Arsenal won it last year, those two quite predictably so at the top of the division, Bristol Rovers third, Tottenham down in fourth, Lower Stuff now down in fifth, they won this, the Premier League three times I think in total, yep they did there, Staines, Boreham, Wood and Carlisle going down, West Brom only just surviving, so despite going up with Spurs, they've struggled this season, only survived on goal difference, which just shows that it, these teams going up to the top division, it doesn't mean you're guaranteed to just blitz the league the, the season after. In fact, they may struggle and get relegated next season. We'll see. Harry Kane, top scorer again, 26 goals for last stop. Carlos Fierro, second for Chelsea. Football manager legend there. Aaron Creswell, Ribeiro and Matty James, top three for Spurs in average ratings. They've also got the most assists. But Chelsea didn't run away of it. That's not many points at all to win the league. So it's quite close at the top. 
there's not a huge gap between the likes of Chelsea and Lowestoft, so we may see the tables turn next season. The Premier League is all the way down to 10th now. We'll have a look at the competition reputation in a bit in the, the next season, in fact. Let's look at the FA Cup, which was won by Stockport. That is really good to see, beating Chelsea 3-0 in the final. Well done to Stockport County. Berini with two goals and Yusuf Poulsen with the other. Phil Jones sent off for Chelsea. That's that's good, isn't it? Let's go down to the Capital One Cup, which was won by Man United. 2-0 against Brackley. Brackley did well to get to the final, but Man United all the way down in League One, getting promoted, of course, um, went in the Capital One Cup. English Community Shield won by Peterborough on penalties against Arsenal. That's good as well. So although Arsenal and Chelsea dominating at the top of the Premier League, the other teams are actually getting a foot in. Uh, Man United won 3-0 against Con Concord Rangers in the... Johnson's Paint Trophy and Huddersfield beat Leeds United a Yorkshire rivalry there I'm not sure Leeds fans would be too happy about that at all losing 2-1 in that FA Trophy final let's look at the Champions League quickly before moving on to the next season and also the, the Europa League uh, Atletico won it this year let's have a look at the groups Just uh, we'll go back in time to see how far the English guys got Chelsea got to the quarters lost against Atletico the eventual winners and think that oh, Arsenal lost in the first knockout round against Real Madrid. Let's go down to the Euro Cup, which was won by Juventus, 1-0 against Monaco in the final. Chelsea won it last year, of course. They did very well. I mean, and they got the Champions... Well, I think they were qualified in the league anyway for the Champions League. Let's look at... Is there any English teams in here? Can't see anyone. Um, Celtic got there, but Lowestoft lost in the second knockout round against Dynamo Kiev. Oh, they did okay to get that far. That's a, that's an achievement for them. They beat Fiorentina in the first knockout round. So that's good. That That's well done to them. So here's the end of the 2021-22 season, which was won by Millwall, the Conference South, that is. Only one point ahead of Cardiff, who are one point ahead of Fulham, but Fulham have finally gone up via the playoffs. Well done to them. They, they've really stuck at it. Eventually won the playoffs and gone up. Dorchester, Billerick and Hampton and Richmond going down. Hampton and Richmond would have survived if they hadn't gone into administration. They were deducted 10 points. You can have a look at the, the stats there, manager movements if you're interested in that sort of thing. Let's go up to the Conference North quickly, which was won by Hull City. They've gone up eventually. Derby missing out on, I don't know, I mean goal difference and goals scored exactly the same. So maybe it goes to head to head after them. I'm not completely sure, but that's that is bizarre. They both got 106 points, 74 goal difference, 96 goals scored, 22 conceded. Maybe it's then how many games you won, actually. 34 for Hull, 33 for Derby. And Derby, unfortunate to lose out in the playoffs in the semi-final. In fact, Wolves won the final against Sheffield Wednesday 3-1. Leeds missing out once again. But four teams getting over 100 points. That is crazy. Stourbridge... Burton and Buxton were relegated from the Vanarama North Conference North. Ryan Taylor, top scorer for Wolves. Joe Scars, highest average rating. And James MacArthur, most assists. So Holland Wolves going up there. Watford, champions of the Vanarama Conference Premier. And QPR win in the playoffs. Beating the likes of Newcastle, who've struggled to get out of that division. Palace as well have missed out. Down in uh, ninth place, Leicester and Villa stuck there as well. Preston, Southport, Crew and Berry going down. Preston, not not too good for them, eh? Top scorer was this guy for Watford, Nikolic, helping them win the league. Montenegrin, one friend, most assists. He must be pretty old by now, surely. 2022. Oh, he's 33. Oh, it's a different one. Is that a different one? Yeah, it must be. The other one, friend's completely different player. Okay, well there we go. <laughs> Let's go up to the League 2, which was won by Stoke City, 120 points. Liverpool, as I predicted, have gone up again because when they get to this point, they've got through that difficult bottleneck of the conference and now it's just pretty easy to get out of League 2 with four teams going up. Accrington also going up automatically and Bradford PA going up in the playoffs. Well done to them. I think they got relegated last season from League 1, so they bounced back straight away. Colwyn Bay missing out in the final. Braintree and Farnborough going down. I think Farnborough have dropped all the way from 
the top division or the championship at least. Yeah, the championship. They had spent a few years in League One, dropped down, and now dropped out of League Two as well. Sorry to see for them. Delfonso, top scorer for Stoke. What's happened to him in real life? I can't actually remember where he is. Huddleston, most assists for Liverpool. So Liverpool making their way back up. League One was won by West Ham. As you would predict, West Ham and Swansea both going up together once again. They didn't quite dominate as much as last year. But Gosport going up in the playoffs, that's good to see. They, they, did, they were pretty successful in the last series. Gateshead, Gainsborough, Concord Rangers and Maidenhead going down. Callum Wilson, top scorer for West Ham. Lewis Graben, most highest average rating. James Morrison, most assists again, along with Tom Weir for Cambridge. And the championship was won by Man United, quite predictably so, but Southampton missing out once again, and Everton all the way down in 17th, so they went up comfortably from League One, but struggled big time in the championship. So this is what we want to see, some teams sort of struggling as they get higher up, because the quality should level out. The, well, the likes of Bromley have signed enough players to finish above Everton in the championship. Southampton, like I said, have missed out once again as well. Staines going up automatically and Boreham Wood going up, bouncing back straight away with those parachute payments, I guess, helping them. Their rich, two and a half star reputation going back up after being relegated. They've turned into a yo-yo yo -yo team, in fact, but they've got enough money to, to get back up again. And uh, the, the quality there and the, the depth behind that team is there. The infrastructure is, enables them to get back up to the, the Premier League, but it's not enough to keep them there. So they've turned into a bit like uh, West Brom a few years ago when they were a yo-yo team. Basin Stoke Geisley and Hemel Hempstead going down. One matter still at Man United. It's gone up that with them the whole way up. Only 210k a week is absolutely ridiculous. Adam Johnson, most assists for Leamington. 34 years old now. Interesting stuff indeed. So let's look at the Premier League. We'll look at some of the transfers this time. I think I forgot last time. Chelsea have won it for the second time in a row. Arsenal second. Now it's a big gap. It wasn't a big gap last season, but look at that gap to third place Shrewsbury. Bristol Rovers down in uh, fourth as well. Can't, we can't seem to see the Euro places this time around for some reason. But West Brom, champs had relegated again. They, they've turned into a yo-yo team. West Brom as well. Oxford. So West Brom have gone down. That's what I was discussing last time. That they only just survived and this time they have gone down so they they were good enough to comfortably make their way up with Tottenham as the sort of second string teams to go up they've made they made their way up together into the Premier League but they aren't good enough to stay there so it it shows that it's not going to be plain sailing for these current Premier League teams Tottenham and City fifth and sixth but they are behind Shrewsbury and Bristol Rovers there lowest toft really struggled down in 13th not sure what happened there. Samba Longa, top scorer for Shrewsbury, 28 goals. Bernardo Silva, is he a regen? No, he's a real Portuguese player. Probably should know him. Someone's going to shout at me now. Jack Grealish, most assists for Chelsea. So let's look at the transfers. And the biggest transfers. Oh, Arsenal signing a Cagliari player. Harry Kane going from lower stuff to Chelsea, 20 million. Oh, he's made a move from last... Maybe that's why they struggled. They've missed him. Um, they signed him for 34.5 million. I don't know why they've sold him for so cheap. Maybe he had a year left in his contract. And he has left Lowestoft, which is sad to see. I liked him when he was at Lowestoft, and now he's gone to Chelsea. Ah, sold, sold out, hasn't he? Raheem Sterling is the top English player, plays for Atletico. Top teams, United, Chelsea, Bristol, Rovers, Spurs, Man City and Lowestoft. Let's have a quick look at the national team. Um, Wesley Fodderingham in there for Fulham. Who are all the way down in like what, the conference, aren't they? That's crazy. Luke Shaw plays for AC Milan. A couple of players for, play for AC Milan, in fact. But, hmm, I wanted to see more Lowestofts in there, but there aren't. That's a shame. The thing is, this database has allowed the English players to move abroad, perhaps become better players. They're first. Oh, that's not first in the world. Um, but they're, they're also the big teams, Arsenal, Man City, Chelsea, have signed English players and they're actually playing them and doing very well. They're seventh in the world, which is it's quite good. Better than real life at the moment. These are the top teams, apparently. 
Let's look at the finances in England. Who are the, the top teams in England? We've got Chelsea at the top, Man United, Arsenal, Spurs, Man City. Back to the usual proceedings there. Bristol Rovers and last of next though. And we've got Shrewsbury, Peterborough. A few other Premier League teams. Oxford City up there in 16th despite being in the Championship. As are Chorley in 19th. But we've got the likes of QPR who are a conference team. Who are 32nd worth £26 million. So the FA Cup was won by Chelsea on penalties against Arsenal in the final. Not such an interesting one this time round. But let's go down and see. The Capital One Cup won by Stockport, beating Arsenal in the final. 1-0, that's good. Chelsea also lost against Stockport in the Community Shield. Johnson's Paint Trophy won by Liverpool, 2-0 against Exeter. <laughs> Some crazy results here, it's just brilliant to see. Derby beating uh, QPR in the FA Trophy in extra time. Let's have a look at the Champions League. England only have two teams getting into it nowadays. So it's just Chelsea and Arsenal. We need to go back a, se back a season, in fact. Let's go back. It's Atletico won it again for the second time in a row. You may have seen there. Beating Roma in the final. Semi-final. And in oh, Chelsea got to the semi-final. Lost against Atletico again. Quarter-final. No English teams apart from Chelsea. And yeah, looks like Arsenal missed out. We won't look at the groups. Euro Cup, though, was won by... Let's See, won by Napoli in the final against CSK Moscow. Let's go back in time and look at if there's any English teams in there. Arsenal got to this round, must have finished third in their group, and lost against Shakhtar in the second qualifying or second knockout round. Oh, where are we? There we are. Any other English teams get in there? Oh, yeah, Bristol Rovers lost against AZ in the first knockout round. Just have a quick look at the World Golden Ball. Messi still winning it at the age of 34. And Ronaldo is 36 years old and still finishing second. James Rodriguez third. So that's pretty boring, to be honest. We want some, some different players in there. You thought it would be different by now. Hazard won it last year. But Messi won it this year. World Team of the Year, any interesting teams in there? Can't imagine there's any uh, lower stuff players in there or those sort of players unfortunately uh, it's unlikely for that to happen Chelsea are actually the richest club in the world now so they started in the conference south on this save back in 2015 and in seven years they've become the richest club in the world once again I don't know where they dropped to during that time Tottenham Man City there Bristol Rovers 25th richest team in the world and lowest of 33rd that is good to see let's look at the competitions um, Premier League down there. Nation rankings. England 7th, Argentina are currently 1st. But I think that's it for this episode. It's the end of part 5. But thank you for watching. Like I said, 200 likes and I'll do a, a part 7. I'm definitely doing part 6, which will be 10 seasons long. And I'll just do a, an update at the end of those 10 seasons. I'm not going to do each season in detail. It'll take forever. But I'll show you sort of who's won it over the last, who's won different competitions over the last 10 years. Um, but then if you want part 7, 200 likes on this video and I will do that. But thank you for watching. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Anything you spotted that I didn't spot. Anything funny or interesting that you, that you found. And if you're playing on my database, which is in the Steam Workshop, link is in the description below. Let me know how it's going. What's happened in your saves? Perhaps you've holidayed it to see what's happening. Let me know. Or well, perhaps you're playing as one of these teams. Maybe you're playing as lower stuff and trying to lead them to Champions League glory. Let me know how it's going. Either in the comment section below or via Twitter. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in part six.